Welcome back to Universe. I'm Andrew, and today I'm playing Marvel Champions, the new Next Evolution campaign expansion, which includes Domino and Cable. I'm going to play the first scenario, which is Marauders in the Morlock Siege. So the Marauders actually take up the first two scenarios of this campaign. It's the same villains, but different encounter cards, which is interesting and new. And I'm going to be playing the character Domino, which again is a new character for the box. And I'm playing her pre-constructed deck, which I don't do a lot, but I also don't have a lot of time. The expansion just came out yesterday and I'm leaving in a couple days on vacation. So I want to squeeze this in instead of looking up a deck or try to build a deck. I'm just going to play it straight out of the box. So let's take a look at Domino. So this is her alter ego form, Nina Thurman. She has three recover. You can choose a card in your hand and swap it with the top of your discard pile. Or in hero form, you can swap it with the top card of your deck. And she also says that when counting resources on cards discarded from the top of your deck, count each printed wild icon twice. So I guess she's going to have the cards. I should have... Eh, read through her kit, read through her cards before I shuffled it up, but we're just going to get started. I did read ahead on the side schemes, or the main schemes rather, because sometimes those mess me up uh, with unhappy surprises in the middle of a playthrough. Uh, Domino has one thwart, two attack, and three defense. And we're not going to look at all the villains because, well, there are seven of them and we're only going to have to beat three of them to win. I mean, I guess we can look through them real quick. We have Arclight, Blockbuster, Chimera... Grey Crow, Harpoon, Riptide, and Vertigo, the Marauders. So if you would like to pause and read them all, otherwise we're just going to take closer looks at whoever actually comes out. Our main scheme is starting as Knock Knock, which says after resolving step one of the villain phase, place a knock counter here, and if there are at least three of them, it advances. So at maximum, we're going to get three through three villain phases before having to flip this over because basically we're trying to help the Morlocks um, get away from the Marauders who are coming in to kill them all. And then we've got this Routed Environment card, which basically just says that when we defeat a villain, uh, it's going to go under here. And then this says that when we have defeated three, we win the game. But this has a little fun little bit of text at the end. The villain activates against you. So when I do defeat a villain, a new one will come out and immediately activate based on that. So let's actually open up the campaign book says Gray Mulkin Earth Orbit. Hey Cable, you got this 200 inch screen but only one channel? If you're bored Wade, you could take a walk outside. Incoming emergency signal. Put it on screen professor. Hope, what is it? Someone is attacking the Morlock tunnels. I'm trying to fend them off but I need backup. We're on our way. Now that's what I call entertainment. Take cover till we arrive. Don't try to be a hero. I know the drill dad. I had a good teacher. And then we body slide by three to teleport into the Morlock tunnels. Of course, in this scenario, I'm going to be, or this situation, I'm going to be playing just Domino solo. I have played some of the other campaign scenarios two-handed on camera, and it was just a lot. And I realized I think I prefer playing one-handed. Off camera, I might play two-handed still uh, with two heroes at a time, but a bit much for recording. Now, part of the campaign setup, I also got to choose, actually, it's on the back of the booklet here, uh, campaign player side schemes. And for each of these scenarios, I get to choose one special campaign player side scheme, which we'll look at in a second. Looks like there's actually one more side scheme than there are scenarios. So you'll have one left over that you didn't use. But I chose assemble the team in part just because it was the first one. But also the ally thing, I did... What I've seen of Domino's list is she does have a few allies that are relevant, so hopefully that'll be good. It says it doesn't count against the player side scheme limit. So player side schemes is a new mechanism. If you haven't looked at the previews or anything for this campaign box, there is a new card type that players can play, which are side schemes, which sounds like you wouldn't want to do that. But if you defeat your own side scheme that you created or, you know, one of the allies side schemes, um, you get a reward. So there are optional side schemes. You can play them, you can solve them, and then you get rewarded for them. This one, we don't have to play it. It just starts in play. And if we do defeat it, search with four threat per player, which I've set up over here, we'll flip that and it will become this team assembled card, which as an action, I can remove the one assembly counter on it and search my deck and discard pile for an ally and put it directly into play, cost three or less. So it's a free ally uh, at the cost of having to thwart for four. I'm not sure the technically correct order of drawing my hand mulliganing versus selecting my enemy, but I'm gonna select which of these seven 
we're going to play against first. And rather than shuffling seven cards, I'm going to roll a D8. Arclight will be one. Just go alphabetically here. A two is going to be Blockbuster coming out first. And he's got two, or zero scheme, two attack. We will star, scary star. When Blockbuster attacks you or an ally, choose to give him tough or plus two attack. So you can attack for four unless we let him become tough. And oh, the uh, the Marauders, they do have a B side. I'm going to be playing on the A side. The B would be if you wanted to play Expert. All right. So now I do know that Blockbuster is starting out as I choose my starting hand. I should be an Alter Ego form Nina Thurman. My hand size is six. So we'll draw six cards and see if I want to mulligan any of these. All right, I'm going to mulligan away Sharpshooter and Wolfsbane and draw two replacement cards. Sorry, I cheated. I'm mulliganing three. I, I knew that I was doing that. I just, uh, I'm actually, this one's a special one. This one is called Jackpot. It has an energy, a mental, and a strength resource on it. And after it's discarded from the top of your deck, shuffle it back into your deck. So it's not a great card to have in my hand, but... With Nina Thurman, I can choose a card in my hand and swap it with the top of my discard pile. So I actually wanted to put something in my discard pile that I was going to get back. I don't know. Kind of weird, but it's going to let me see an extra card. So now I'm going to go ahead. Now we're starting, and I'm going to go ahead and use that ability. And I'm going to swap this team investigation from my hand with the top of my discard pile, which is jackpot. Then I'm going to change into hero form. Once per turn, I can change from alter ego to hero or vice versa. And in this form, I can choose a card in my hand to swap with the top of my deck. So now I'm going to swap jackpot with the top of my deck and get another card. I should have set Blockbuster's health. He's got 11. And I think we're going to do a bit of setting up. I'm going to play Domino's Pistol which costs two, and I'm going to pay with the Painted Lady, which I think would have been nice to have, but um, oh well, and then a good workout, which I'm going to look at in a second, but Domino's Pistol says it's restricted, so I can only have two. It's a weapon, two hands, makes sense. As a hero action, uh, as an attack, I can exhaust that card. It's an upgrade, so it's going to stay in play, and choose an enemy, discard the top card of my deck, and deal a damage for each resource icon discarded. This attack gains ranged. So that actually works well with this sharpshooter card I discarded, but I think I'm okay with that. So I'm going to play Domino's Pistol. Now, let's look at a good workout. It costs two. This is an event, so this is a one-time thing. For two costs, same cost, this would be a hero action attack that deals four damage, then discard and do extra damage for each resource. So this is basically the same thing, but for uh, four extra damage. The difference, of course, being this is a one-time effect, and this I'm going to be able to do every turn for the rest of the game. So I'm investing in our future here by playing Domino's Pistol instead of getting four extra damage up front. Then I will go ahead and use it. We're gonna discard the top card of our deck, which we know is Jackpot. And you can see that it's got three resources printed on it. This is counting those three resources, so it's gonna be three damage. And Domino says, when counting resources on cards discarded from the top of your deck, each printed wild is counted twice. Oh, Jackpot doesn't have a printed wild, though. So it is just going to be three damage to Blockbuster, which will put him down to eight. So not bad. So now, now Jackpot was put into the discard pile from the top of my deck, and its response is after it's discarded from the top of your deck, shuffle it back into your deck. So we get to put Jackpot back in, and we can hit it again later. Then I'm going to play Right Place, Right Time. I'm going to discard Lucky Break and Digging Deep in order to play this one. This is an event, one-time thing, and it's to remove three threat from a scheme, discard the top of your deck for each resource on it, remove an extra threat. So I'm gonna choose the assemble the team. So we're gonna remove three plus one for each resource on this card. Of course, there's one, so we'll get a fourth. Actually, this is a wild, so this would be a bonus one with Domino's uh, bonus ability, but there's only four on there, so we got all four of it off, and that's done. This is now side scheme is defeated. It says flip it and put a assem team assembled into play and comes with an assembly counter on it. But of course, I'm going to remove that assembly counter in order to search my deck and discard pile for an ally with printed cost three or less and put it into play. Now, technically, this is still in play, but I don't think it does anything anymore. 
It's an environment card. I did discard Wolfsbane in my mulligan, so I could get her out of the discard pile. After she thwarts, name a card type, discard the top of your deck. If it's the named type, add it to your hand. And I don't mind that, but I think I'm gonna start by attacking. There's only one threat here, and if I added a card to my hand right now, I wouldn't really be able to use it. So let's go looking. I don't know what I'm gonna find, but I'm gonna look for somebody else. As much as I like Wolfsbane. All right, I'm going to grab Outlaw. She's going to help me defend against Blockbuster here. So she's a cost three, so I get her for free. With Team Assembled, Thwart 1, Attack 1 with a star. When she does attack, I discard the top card of my deck. She gets plus one attack for each resource. So I'm seeing a theme here. And uh, she has three health and toughness. Toughness being nice because I'm going to be able to defend her Blockbuster with her. So she's going to come out. I'm going to give her a tough status card. So next time she would take any damage, she takes none. And I forgot to use Domino. Um, I mean, I'm not forgetting now. So I can either use her Thwart or attack for two. Thwart one off of Knock Knock. Or let's just do two more damage to Blockbuster. The basic action here, do two, put him down to six. And that will end the hero phase. So I'll ready all my cards and draw a new hand of just five this time because in hero form her hand size is only five i didn't use outlaw because she would have taken consequential damage and that would have removed the tough so i'm gonna have her sit tight for now all right so the main scheme gets one threat per player because it says plus one per player that happens each round if it gets to six it will advance it also gets one knock counter because it's of its own special effect if it gets three knock counters it will advance. Then Blockbuster gets to activate against me because I'm in hero form. That activation is going to be an attack. He has two attacks. He's going to hit me for two from nine down to seven, except that I have to choose between giving him a tough status or plus two attack, which would make him four. I'm going to choose to give him plus two attack. So he's going to hit me for four, but I'm going to choose to defend that attack with outlaw. And because she's tough, neither of us takes any damage. And then, now she's not tough anymore, and she's exhausted, and she won't ready again until the end of my next turn. So she's pretty out of it for now, but I blocked all four damage. And then I get an encounter card, so let's see what it is. We got Bound by Business. Discard cards from the encounter deck until a Marauder minion that doesn't share a title with a minion, it doesn't share a title with a card in play, is discarded, put it into play, engaged with you. So we're going to discard until we get a minion that isn't Blockbuster. And we got Harpoon. So he is, these are discarded. And he is a zero scheme, two attack, five health, guard, which means we can't hit Blockbuster till Harpoon is gone. When Harpoon attacks you or an ally you control, choose to take two indirect damage, or he gets plus two attack and piercing. All right, that's annoying because that's five more health I have to get through. And I don't like it. And I really do want to get through that because I don't want that four more damage coming in. All right, I got some pretty good cards here. I think I'm gonna play Diamond back. Unfortunately, I don't have anything that I really wanna swap at the top of my deck. Although I guess I could. Yeah, okay, before we play Diamond back, I'm probably gonna play her, but I'm gonna switch this probability field to the top of my deck. I know I'm not gonna play this probability field this turn, and I could draw something different or better or set up for my other play. So I'm gonna swap for this Sharpshooter. All right, and then I'm going to discard the Sharpshooter and Feral, another character I like, but I'm going to pay two resources. Each one has a one single printed resources, regardless of the type. It's going to be two resources to pay for the two cost. This is another ally. She's got one thwart and one attack with two health only, but I can exhaust her and deal damage one damage to her and discard the top of my deck and deal the damage to each enemy for each resource icon discarded. So... Now I have a decision to make because I know what the top card of my deck is. It's probability field and it has a wild resource on it, which with Domino's ability would be two. So I can exhaust diamond back and do two damage to all enemies, which would be harpoon and blockbuster. Or I could use Domino's pistol to discard the top of my deck and deal that much damage, which again would end up being two, but that would just do it to one enemy. So using diamond back with the probability field definitely is better. But I also in my hand have Luck Be a Lady with one more card, which I can use to discard it and to pay for that. And this is discard the top of your deck and count the resources on it, which we know, again, is one, but would count as two. If it is energy, heal two. If it is mental, remove two threat. And if it is strength, deal three damage. 
If it's wild, choose one of the above. But again, it would be too wild, so I get to choose two of the above, as far as I can tell, which seems really powerful. A one-cost event that I can do, used to do six damage, three different instances of three. This is not considered to be an attack. This is just being lucky. So we can damage Blockbuster, even though Harpoon is a guard. Yeah, this seems uh, too good to pass up. So I'm going to discard my superpower training to pay for Luck Be a Lady. Discard the top of my deck. Get two wilds and deal three damage twice. One of those batches of damage is going to go to Harpoon, knocking him down to two. And the other three will put Blockbuster down to three. And then Domino can use her basic power to attack for two and finish off harpoon and now blockbuster is at three i can use my pistol to do one damage putting him down to two and now i don't even know if it's worth i could thwart with diamondback the thing is thwarting i don't think makes a ton of sense because if i pass the turn knock knock is going to get a third threat and a second knock counter and then on my next turn regardless of how much threat it has it's then going to go into the villain phase and get a third knock and advance anyway so I'm probably going to switch to Alter Ego form next turn. And there's no point in reducing that too, because it's not going to get up to six, unless we draw an advance for our encounter card, in which case still Blockbuster Scheme value is two. The boost would probably be, I mean, if it gets a boost of three, then it actually would advance this turn or this round. But nonetheless, I'm not going to thwart with Diamond back. I guess I'll just use her ability. She's only going to hit one enemy but there's a chance that it does more than one damage, which is her printed value. So let's just, I mean, I could save her, but I'm not going to. All right, so we do one damage. So it puts Blockbuster down to one. I'll end the turn, ready, draw five more cards. And the main scheme, knock, knock, gets one more threat per player, gets a second knock counter. Blockbuster will attack. And this time I think I'll probably defend with Diamond back. We'll let him get his two attack. Diamondback can take all the damage. Oh, I didn't draw a boost for him last time, did I? All right, um, well, it's hard to fix that now, but let's pretend this was the boost, plus three. So we're counting just the three icons there. Yeah, I'm a little rusty on my Marvel Champions, I suppose. So that was for last attack, just in case it had given him breakthrough or something. But now he's gonna get a boost to attack Diamondback, and it is actually a zero. So he just does four damage to her, regardless of the amount of damage she's defeated. And we get our encounter card, which, <laughs> okay, is Shadows of the Past. Reveal your set-aside nemesis, put it into play. Reveal your set-aside nemesis side scheme, put it into play. Shuffle the rest of the encounter set into the end deck. And uh, if it doesn't enter play, this says Surge. Which means we get to meet Topaz, which is a character I've actually never read about, never seen before. She's a one scheme, two attack three health, shuffle the encounter, discard, and set aside area for superpower feedback. So basically one of her cards is going to start immediately. And this is an attachment that you attach to your identity. So this is going to be on Domino. After she resolves an ability on her identity or an identity specific card, take one damage. As an alter ego action, you can discard an identity, identity specific card to remove it. All right, so this is now on domino whenever we use her action to swap cards she takes a damage if i play a card that is from her domino kit we take a damage and topaz is in the way here well she doesn't have guard so she's not technically in the way and this side scheme also comes out not my lucky day domino is having terrible horrible no good very bad day all right these other two cards will get shuffled in and not My Lucky Day has three threat on it and says when revealed each player must either take a damage or place two more threat here and it applies an extra boost icon to the villain activations. Well, let's see my hand. I think I'm going to take the damage. I haven't seen a ton of abilities to get rid of threats so far. So put this out with three. I don't know if it's a priority to get rid of that or if I can just accept the extra boost icon. I'm going to start by having Outlaw attack topaz so again when she attacks we discard the top of our deck for potentially bonus attack and it's a one again so it's two damage to topaz uh, i'm gonna shoot her with the pistol as well or one more damage 
That's I mean that's all I needed, but I was, she's got a few cards in her deck that when discarded from the top of the deck get added to her hand. I was kind of hoping for a free resource. Got rid of Topaz at least, and I can finish off Blockbuster, but Routed would have the next villain come out and activate immediately. Oh, maybe last turn was the turn I needed to be Alter Ego because this will flip. This will advance before the villain activates. Oh no. Oh, now I need to take her one consequential damage for attacking. Right, I don't love this move, but I'm going to play Atlas Bear. She costs three, so I'm paying three. She is not a um, domino card, so I'm not taking damage from feedback. I also didn't use my action ability, so I'm not taking damage from that. As an action, I can exhaust her, look at the top of my deck or any player's deck, but there's only one player this game. And if it's an event, Atlas Bear takes a damage if I want to and add it to the player's hand. But I don't think I'm going to do it this turn. I'm going to change into Alter Ego form and discard an identity-specific card to get rid of the feedback. I'm going to discard Pip the Pug, which seems nice, but get rid of the feedback and now I have no cards in my hand you know what rewind that for a second I'm just gonna thwart with her first with her one thwart value and then everything else is fine but I'm just gonna remove one from here I don't think I care about knock knock again because it's about to get its third knock counter I will attack with Atlas Bear even though it's only for one but Blockbuster is only at one so we're gonna put him down to zero so Blockbuster is defeated he's gonna be routed and now, again, after the villain's defeated, put it under here. Discard each minion that shares a title with the top villain. So that's supposed to reveal the next one. So I'm going to roll to see who is next. Again, Arclight will be one. I got a one, so Arclight is out. And so if an Arclight minion had been in play, it would be gone. And then the villain activates against each player. So that's one third of the way toward victory. But now we have to deal with Arclight. She has 10 health and... When she attacks you or an ally you control, choose to confuse a character you control or she gets plus two attack. She's activating now, but because I'm in alter ego form, she's going to scheme. She schemes for one plus a boost of one. So two more gets added on, putting it up to five, which is not quite six. But I think this worked out just fine. So now I'm going to ready and draw now i get six cards because i'm back in alter ego form with the bigger hand size my deck's getting pretty small during the villain phase this is going to get one oh i forgot the not my lucky day means plus one boost so it's actually six already which means it advanced during my turn so let's see what happens mutant masker each player puts one set aside morlock alley into play under their control two instead if you're solo shuffle hide into the encounter deck oh and if the previous stage would advance by knock counters each ally would be tough so i missed out on the tough because i didn't i had advanced via threat instead of via knocks so that is a little bit of a bummer that i didn't let it knock itself out so i'm gonna get two more locks they're one ones they have victory minus one which means if they leave play instead of going to the discard pile they go into the victory pile and at the end of the game you would count up your victory points and this is worth negative one. As far as I know, this campaign doesn't use victory points. Actually, I'm just starting the campaign, so I have no idea. But the previous campaign didn't use victory points. So we'll see if that actually matters. But at the very least, it's an indicator that you shouldn't let your Morlocks die. Doesn't count against your ally limit. Card abilities cannot remove it from play. When an enemy attacks you, it attacks a Morlock instead. But they have a nice big five health. And I get two of those. Also, we're shuffling Hide into the encounter deck. It has Surge, which means if we draw it as an encounter card, we'll draw another one. But when revealed, give a Morlock tough. So it's actually a benefit for us that our Morlocks have the ability to hide at random occasionally. If it is drawn as a boost, a Morlock will get tough and the villain will get an additional boost. So either way, it surges, I suppose. So that's getting shuffled in. And then Mutant Massacre... It's going to flip over to this side. Cool art there with the Marauders coming out. The pop number is eight per player. In this case, eight. So if it gets to eight, I will lose the game. I also lose if there are no Morlocks in play. So these guys are valuable. If there are three villains under routed, I win, which is what the previous main scheme said anyway. But now I have the extra thing as an action. I can exhaust a Morlock ally to shuffle hide from the discard pile into the encounter deck. Currently hide is in the encounter deck, so I can't really use that right now, but I could use it 
later. So knocks are gone. This starts with zero, so it's got no threat on it. That happened during my turn, unfortunately. So then when we go into the villain phase, it will get one per player. And then the villain will activate. She will scheme because I'm in alter ego form. She's scheming for one plus a boost of one, which is two plus one is three. And it goes up to four out of eight already. Kind of scary. Then we get our encounter card, which is a side scheme territorial control. It has assault. Basic thwarts against this scheme use attack. Okay, so we attack the territorial control instead of scheme against it. I mean, technically it's called a thwart action, but it would use an attack value. Which is a little bit of a bummer because Domino's actually has a better attack. Oh no, that's good. T better attack is better. But we can't actually attack it like with the pistol, for example. When revealed, place an additional threat for each villain under routed. So because I defeated Blockbuster, it's going to have five instead of four. Also, this is a crisis. So as long as this is out, I cannot thwart the main scheme, which is scary because it's got halfway already to me losing. All right, so I'll put three, four, five there. And now it's my turn. All right, I don't know if this is going to work, but I don't know what else I would do with it. So I'm going to use our alter ego action to swap a card with our hand from the top of our discard pile. I'm going to get Pip the Pug back, and I don't think I'm going to be playing this even the odds, so we'll put that into the discard pile in Pip's place. I'm going to play Pip by paying with Team Investigation. So Pip just costs one, and exhaust Pip the Pug, put a domino or posse card from your discard pile on top of your deck. I'm going to go ahead and use Pip to put a domino or posse card from my discard pile on top of my deck, and I'm going to grab the card called the posse. This is an event, max one per deck, only if you have three characters with the posse trait. Currently I have two. I have Outlaw and Atlas Bear. As an action, I can heal a damage. Well, this is an event, so it's an action. Uh, deal heal a damage from each posse character and ready them. Now this is going top of my deck with Pug's ability, but I'm going to use Atlas Bear to reveal the top of my deck, which is posse. She will take one damage and then add it to my hand if it's an event. Or if in this event, I can have her take a damage to get it. Then I'm going to change into hero form. And now I am a posse member. So I actually do have three posse characters. Let's have outlaw attack arc light. So she's attacking for one. Actually, you know what? Let's hold off for a second. I'm going to use domino to swap jackpot, which I drew with the top of my deck. So I get another team investigation. And then I'm going to play right place, right time. I played one of these earlier. I'm going to pay with strength, which generates two resources. So it pays the two cost by itself. Remove three threat from a scheme. I'm going to choose territorial control. Discard the top of my deck and for each resource, remove an extra. So jackpot has three resources. So we're going to remove six instead of three. And it also only got five on it. So we get rid of the crisis, which is nice because then I can try to actually deal with the massacre again. Jackpot, when discarded from the top of my deck, is shuffled into my deck. My deck being small as it is, it's likely I will see that one again. And now that it's shuffled back into my deck, I might pull it again with Outlaw. So we'll see, because now I'll go ahead and attack with her for one plus, ooh, Digging Deep. So Digging Deep is a wild resource. After it's discarded from the top of your deck, add it to your hand. And with Domino's first ability, that one wild resource icon counts as two. So Outlaw's actually hitting for three and arc light goes down to seven and i get digging deep into my hand so that's really nice i mean i do want to get some of the threat off the massacre it's a bit scary but uh I have, i'm gonna do that so but first i'm gonna attack with domino against arc light for two that'll put her down to five well i might not be i'm definitely gonna play the posse i'm gonna pay with genius which also makes two resources on its own so we get to ready our three posse members and heal each of them for one, Domino goes back up to her max of nine. So that's pretty powerful. Then I'm going to risk it with Atlas Bear. Let's see if we get another event. And it is an event. We got a good workout. I'm adding that to my hand. So she takes a damage. And I'm just going to use that with Digging Deep to pay for Team Investigation. I mean, I guess I could have taken out Arclight with that good workout. You know what? Screw the Mutant Massacre. <laughs> We're damaging arc light so yeah i'm gonna play this copy of a good workout paying with these two deal four damage discard the top of your deck and add extra damage so i'm discarding that's the jackpot so the jackpot's gonna make that into seven damage we only needed five so jackpot's still gonna get shuffled 
back in and Arclight is defeated. She is routed and we have to pull somebody else. I'll re-roll a six here. We got a five. It's going to be whoever's on the bottom here. Alphabetically, we get Vertigo. She's one of my favorites from the uh, Savage Land series of the X-Men cartoon. Thought she was cool looking, making everybody dizzy. So what's she going to do here? Two scheme, zero attack. When she attacks, though, stun a character a control or she gets plus two attack. Okay, well, she activates immediately, we know, from routed. And I actually have no problem with her stunning a character I control. I'm going to have her stun a Morlock. And she's attacking because I'm in hero form. Attacks automatically get redirected to a Morlock. I'm going to have her attack the stunned, Warlo uh, stunned Morlock. She's attacking for zero, though, so I'm not even going to defend. Just let her go. It's going to be zero plus one. Plus one more from not my lucky day. So the Morlock takes two damage and she's going to have only nine health and we can start hitting her. I will, well, I'm going to exhaust this Morlock to get rid of the stun and I will exhaust this Morlock to thwart for one. So it'll take a consequential damage, remove one threat. Thanks for the Morlocks. They're helping out. I mean, of course they are, right? Now I'm going to go ahead and attack with Outlaw, attack Vertigo here for one plus i got the jackpot again so we're gonna keep shuffling it back in do i just have is there just one jackpot that keeps coming up maybe i'm bad at shuffling let's see this is why i don't shuffle small decks but i'm gonna take it so we're gonna do four damage to vertigo that's gonna put her down to five I'll attack with the pistol do one more damage put vertigo down to four and i'll attack with domino putting vertigo down to two now i'll let her stay at four and I'll have uh, Domino thwart for one instead of attack for two. I mean, I think we can do the last four damage, so there's no reason to get her down to three versus a difference of one on the main scheme could actually make a pretty big difference. Uh, Outlaw needs her consequential damage, and I will end my turn by readying and drawing five cards, which actually empties my deck, which means I get dealt an extra encounter card and reshuffle my deck. So this could actually be a little bit scary. The uh, main scheme gets one threat per player and Vertigo will attack again or activate against me. She's going to attack. She's going to attack a Morlock. I'll let them get stunned and yeah, I'll just let her attack this Morlock. I don't think there's any boosts for four. So again, I'm not going to defend. It's just a one. Oh, a three would have been a plus one to make four, and that actually would have taken out my Morlock. But I don't lose unless I lose both of them. So that one boost becomes two, and his damage becomes three. Then I get dealt another encounter card, and I have to resolve both of them. We got an assault, so she attacks again. Well, I'm okay with her stunning the other Morlock, but now this guy's got two damage on it, and remembering the lucky, not my lucky day, adding to the boost, that's... Even a boost of zero would make three, so a boost of one or two would take him out. Do I sacrifice a posse member? I mean, I've also got... You know you know what? I'm going to defend with Domino. Yeah, we'll just defend with Domino. Uh, I will let this Morlock become stunned, and Vertigo is going to hit Domino for zero plus a boost. Boost is two, plus one is three, minus Domino's defense value of three is actually zero. So that's the assault done, and another one is back in action. Treachery, give the villain tough, place threat on the main scheme, equal number of villains. So, ooh, so it goes up to five out of eight because we've got two routed villains that had three and she becomes tough. All right, now can we close it out? We got two stunned Morlocks and we have an exhausted Domino. What did I draw? All right, well, I'm going to use the action to swap a card with the top of my deck. I'm going to put White Fox on top of my deck. Ooh, look at that. Fortunately, I just drew the posse, but if I exhaust them, they're going to be defeated by consequential damage. So I'm not going to get extra uses out of them this round. But I will go ahead and use the pistol to shoot Vertigo for discard this card. It has one resource on it, so it's going to do one damage, but she's tough, so all that damage is prevented. But White Fox says that when she's discarded from the top of your deck, put her into play. So we got another posse member over here. And then I can attack with her to do one damage to Vertigo, putting her down to three. White Fox takes one consequential damage, and then we'll play the Posse, paying with energy to ready 
one. Oh, it readies them all and heals them all. So it's not like I I need a minimum of three, but it readies them all. So I've got four posse members out now. Domino is ready for action. White Fox can go again. Just for fun, I'm going to use Atlas Bear to check for an event. It's not an event. I mean, I have Digging Deep and Jackpot in my hand. And then along with this defense card. So my hand is pretty bad, but fortunately we've got the allies for it. Outlaw can attack for one plus one more. Actually, that's a wild resource, so Domino makes it three, and Vertigo is taken out. She's routed, and she'll join Blockbuster and Arclight in our routed pile. And I'll leave the Mutant Massacre, and White Fox and Domino can just thwart Not My Lucky Day. Finally get that off the table, even though the game's technically over already. So, victory. Record the title of each villain routed under Marauders Defeated. All right, so we have to remember... Who got defeated? Record the number of Morlock allies still in play. Morlock saved, too. There's a campaign environment card in play. Mark it as earned. Team assembled has been earned. Oh, I never even read this. Scenario one, Morlock Siege. The Morlocks, a group of shunned mutants living in exile in forgotten tunnels beneath New York City, are under siege by the mutant mercenary group known as the Marauders. Hope Summers, member of the X-Men and adopted daughter of Cable, was checking on the Morlocks in the wake of recent Sentinel attacks when the Marauders came knocking. You leap into action to help fend, help Hope fend off the Marauders and save the Morlocks. All right, so that's what we just did. And then we got some more comic book. Guess the cowards have had enough. No, the withdrawal is strategic. X-Force, tail the Marauders. So it looks like Blockbuster already got who he is looking for. Minutes later... Archangel says, I have eyes on them. You have the girl? Yes, the Senator's inhibitor tech worked nicely. Good, hand her over. Not so fast. Help us take X-Force out, then she's yours. So I guess they captured Hope. And this isn't a Marauder. This is one of the nasty boys working for Sinister. Archangel reports they're in the construction site and they have Hope. Proceed with caution, team. Let's nail these punks. Of course, the comic book previewing some of the future character packs coming out as part of this cycle, Archangel and X-23. Cable is the other character who came in this box set. We also saw Deadpool in the comic at the beginning, who is part of this wave, along with Psylocke, which I don't think got shown. So there you go. That was Domino versus the Marauders, helping the Morlocks escape. It'll be a while before I'm able to continue the campaign, but I plan to play through it. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And bye.